Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a GoFunny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing. Please motivate me by giving me stuff to react to, and I will really, really appreciate. Uh, hope you guys are doing alright, and may you stay blessed. So today I'm going to be reacting to Dr. Zaki Naik's speech in Oxford University. Very good one, part 5. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Uh, Milias Palayo is my name. I'm a, I'm a lawyer, a historian, and also a theologian. You gave a very excellent exposition of uh, the Quran and Islam, but uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are all Abrahamic faiths. A Jew could have said the same thing, or this, almost the same things have you said, by quoting uh, the Quran. Sorry, it's called quoting the, the Torah and the Talmud. A Christian could have said almost everything you said by quoting both the Old Testament and the New Testament. And I do not know whether we should be trying to say one religion is superior or more truthful than another. And if we do go down that line, what does that lead to? Uh, that's what led to the Crusades, etc. You mentioned about justice and peace. Of course, the Christian Bible mentions more there are more verses about justice and peace than there are about the Holy, Holy Spirit. And of course, Christians were pacifists until 313. When, uh, so what is the difference between what you are saying and Judaism and Christianity? And what would that lead to? But after a good question, and I do agree with him that if you read the books of Judaism, the books of Christianity, you will find verses of peace. Never in my lecture ever did I say that any religion is against peace or any religion is in favor of terrorism. I always said all religions are against terrorism. What I made one statement in my speech that the verse of the Quran chapter 5 verse number 32, this verse which is so emphatic, I do not find a similar verse in any of the scripture because I am a student of comparative religion saying that if you kill one innocent human being, it is as though you have killed the whole of humanity. And if you save one innocent human being, it is as though you have saved the whole of humanity. It was only one verse. So that generally, I do agree that most of the religions, almost all, they speak about peace. That's the reason Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. If you read the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 24, verse number 36, when he goes to the upper room, he says, when he wishes apostles, Shalom Alaikum which means same, peace be upon you in Hebrew. So the greetings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him too, when he met the people was Shalom Alaikum, which meant same in Arabic, Assalamu Alaikum, may peace be on you. Regarding you saying that one religion is superior to the other religion, I believe Almighty God sent only one religion. He has not sent different religions. What the Quran says, he has made human beings into different tribes, different colors, different languages, so that they may recognize each other, not they may despise each other. The only religion that God has sent to all his messengers, whether it be Moses, whether it be Jesus, peace be upon him, Moses, peace be upon him, Muhammad, peace be upon him, it was to submit their will to Almighty God. I believe all these messengers, right from Adam, Noah, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them all, all of them brought the same message, that believe in one God and worship him alone and only him and submit your will to that almighty God. Hope that answers the question. Good afternoon, Dr. Nike. Um, my name is Izzy Westbury. I'm the secretary here at the Oxford Union. Uh, I have a very short question to ask. Um, you talk about the hijab being something that serves to protect a woman. Surely it's, not, it's extremely patronizing and degrading to prevent a woman from making that decision for herself. How could you answer that? What's the question, sister? I said, in your speech, you talk about the hijab being something that serves to protect a woman. But how is it not extremely patronizing and degrading in not allowing the woman to make that decision herself? Sister, I pose a very good question. 
that when I say that hijab is required for women, isn't it not degrading for the woman to patronize it? Isn't it degrading? If you read the Quran, the Quran and Islam has prescribed hijab. That means the woman should be covered. The only part that can be seen are the face and the hands up to the wrist. This is for the modesty. And it is not only mentioned in the Quran, it is also mentioned in the Bible. If you read the Bible in the first Timothy, chapter number two, verse number nine, it says that women should be dressed up with shamefacedness. They should be dressed up with sobriety and should not wear braided hair or gold or pearls. It's further mentioned in the first Corinthians, chapter number 11, verse number five, six. The woman that does not cover her head, then she dishonors her head. Her head should be shaved off. Anyway, I don't agree with this. I'm just quoting you from the Bible. Same way if you go to the Vedas, it says that the woman should cover the head. So all the religious scriptures, they talk about the woman covering their head. It is for modesty. It is not to degrade the woman. And if you analyze, there was allegation made against me saying that Dr. Zakir Naik says that if they don't wear hijab, you know, that if you wear Western clothes, there are chances the woman will be raped. It is a misquotation again. What I said that if women were revealing clothes, they have more chances of being raped. What I was doing, the same newspaper, Sunday Times, which spoke against me one year before, on the March of 9th, 2009, Sunday Times carried an article. In Britain, one out of seven feel that the women who were sexy revealing clothes, she should be hit. I'm sorry, I don't agree with it. This is the statistics that was given in the Sunday Times on the 9th of March 2009, that in Britain, one out of seven Britishers believe that the women who were revealing and sexy clothes should be hit. I disagree with this. Furthermore, one more article came in 2005. In the same newspaper, Sunday Times, it said that 26% of the Britishers, they feel that wearing revealing clothes is partially or totally responsible for the rape. So what I say, that the more modest you are dressed up, you are respected more. So Islam has prescribed the modest hijab for the woman not to degrade her but to uplift her. I do agree there may be cultural differences. Islam cannot force anyone to adopt it. There are cultural differences. For example, I'll give you an example. That some societies, what they feel that even looking at the woman is a modest. Some societies feel looking is no problem. But touching a woman is immodest. Some of the societies feel shaking hand is no problem. Some societies feel kissing no problem. Some societies feel doing anything as long as both agree is no problem. Different societies and different cultures have got different rules and regulations. When I went to America, while I was giving a talk, one of the Americans told me, you Eastern woman, you are immodest. I was shocked. I said, why do you call the Eastern woman immodest? He told me, you Eastern woman, you expose your belly. So in American Western country, exposing belly is immodesty. In India, exposing belly is not immodesty, wearing shorts is immodesty. So what I've realized, sister, there's different culture, there's different system. Islam cannot force anyone to adopt. It's clearly mentioned in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse number 256. Like Rafidin, there is no compulsion in religion. But if some women want to adopt the hijab because they feel modest and they feel respected, I feel no other woman should disagree. And when I've been to UK, I've seen hundreds and thousands of women who do cover their hair and who feel that they are uplifted because of this modesty. Hope that answers the question. Uh, very interesting view. I mean, both of them had good questions. I'm going to make this video in two. Um, both of them had good questions. The first one is talking about how can one religion be greater than the other ones when they're speaking about the same thing. That was a very, very good question. And I like how Dr. Zaki Naik actually answered it. He said only one religion was sent. Different races, different cultures, different backgrounds, but one religion for all of us and uh, he didn't mention any he was wise enough to just um, summarize that in the way that he did which I personally um, appreciate you don't have to feel like 
you don't have to feel like you're wrong but he gives an insight of just a glimpse of what that one religion is all about and yeah let me know what you guys actually think otherwise i enjoyed the first half of this and i'll be doing the second one so make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video if there's something you want me to react to please comment down below and i'll be more than glad to react to it